y'all don't know how much anxiety I was having sitting in that seat thinking about walking up these stairs. I said, Lord, please, this would be the wrong day for me to fall in front of all these people. And Kirby would have an attack laughing at me if I fell. So, Lord, I thank you for part one. Get me back to my seat safely. The Lord bless you. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to stand before you. And I could, I could fill up the afternoon with um, so many great things to say about Bishop Brown, but I will not. I will be very brief. My relationship with Kirby Brown goes way, way, way back. I was born in a church called New Jerusalem Holy Church. Um, that's, the, that's the same church where um, uh, Pastor Nathan Simmons comes out of. Um, my parents received the Holy Ghost on the altar under Mother Bonner at New Jerusalem. And often there would be um, this young man there at that time, and this is, this is when I am before uh, six, seven years old, there was always this young man there. He was not a member of New Jerusalem, but he was always there when, when something would be going on. He was always there. They called him at that time Master Curvy Brown. And he would come and he would sing and all the same stuff that he does now, he was doing it way back then. As time went on and um, I started the Bronx Mass Choir, Curvy came and the, these are some of my most, uh, the best memories that I have of Curvy because the Bronx Mass Choir consisted of um, young people and everybody did not come from a holiness church. Everybody was not taught about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. But when, when Curvy came, he came with this. It's like he had a drive to get as many people filled with the Holy Ghost as he could. And so many times our rehearsals would just turn into, it would be no rehearsals. It would just turn into prayer services and, and, and we would, and, and he, he actually helped me to, to move forward and to helping those young people receive the Holy Ghost. It was during that time that um, I would often go to, to the house. Mother Brown, she would cook up some some fried chicken and some rice and some gravy or some pork chops. And um, I, 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 I saw something that moved me and influenced me. Kirby had an altar in his room. In his room, there was an altar. And uh, it was just a chair with a white sheet over it with a Bible and some anointed oil. And I went home and made an altar in my room. And that's, that's what built me and helped to make me who I am today. As time went on, Kirby was there in every major move of my life. He sung at uh, Sabrina and, and my wedding, um, 30 whatever, <laughs> Whatever, a long time, long time ago, he was there. <laughs> he was there for our wedding. Um, when my dad passed, he was there. When my grandma passed, he was there. When my mother passed two years ago, he was there. And they, and everybody that knows me, that knows my dad, you know, he almost <laughs> didn't like nobody. <laughs> But Curvy Brown, he loved Curvy Brown. My my entire family, my little my baby sister, 
grew up with a crush on Kirby Brown until she was grown. So I, I, I thank God for the many years, and I thank God for the influence that Kirby had on so many people around the world. And I just come to remind the saints of God that death has already been defeated. It's defeated. The book of Job calls death the great terror. It has terrorized many for years, but thank God it has no victory over the saints. Amen. God bless you, my brother, and we'll see you in the morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. Protocol have been established. I honor God today for my space in the kingdom. As I was sitting there, I thought about what Bishop Mitchell said and also what Bishop Brian Moore have said. I'm here because I love Bishop and Lady McDaniels and family and the McDaniels family. It was in the late 60s. That's how far I go back. It was at a little church called New Jerusalem Holiness Church on 100th Street in Lexington Avenue. It was the Harrisons and the McDaniels. Eric just was a little guy. His feet barely can touch the pedals. But there was a man in that church named Elder Leon Barner who had gone home to be with the Lord. And Jerusalem was known for a choir that can sing. And they love good singing. And anniversaries, I'm telling you, they had some kind of anniversaries. I come up in that era where churches fellowship with one another. And we fellowship with one another, but it was still something that the older pastors then are different from these new pastors now. Because we really didn't fellowship according to the scripture. It was like the Jews mixing with the Sumerians. You'll catch it by morning. We stuck with our kind. <laughs> but Eric would sing, and I would go down there, and they would call me to sing. And our families met like that. It was Highway Church, Greater Highway. We all fellowship with one another. When you're talking about a good time, we had a time. I remember Bishop McDaniel, he was a strict man. Oh, yeah, Bishop Big Dandy. I was six and seven. I'm talking about when I was six and seven. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Because I'm still young, thank the Lord. Um, but it was in those days that the word of God was really being preached. And Bishop Allen McDaniel believed in the baptism in Jesus' name. I said he believed in the baptism in Jesus' name. After we got older and things, and then Sabrina was around, and Sabrina became his um, boyfriend and girlfriend. And then they wound up getting married. During that time, Sabrina used to have the little prayer caps, her and her sister. Yeah, they were in the little chapel veils. They black and white on. I mean, they were saved and sanctified and running for their lives. Yeah, back then the day, you wasn't allowed to hold hands. You just had to look at each other. But thank God, amen, that his father and mom lived long enough to see their sons. And Terrence and um, Kevin. Um, Kevin was always the jokester. I'm telling you, Kevin can mock you like nobody else. But I want to sing this little song to the family to encourage them. The song said, whatever you do for me, 
However, things work out to be as long as he's in control. Tell your neighbor things are going to work out for me. Whatever you do for me, however things turn out to be, as long as you're in control I know things will work out for me oh whatever you do for me However things turn out to be As long as you're in control I know things will work out for me Oh These troubles and trials they only come to Remember all 
Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Come on, look at somebody and say, neighbor? He's working it out. If you believe it, if you really believe it, clap your hands and give God a praise if you know that he's working it out. Believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.